Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to uh, Tuesday's Lunch and Learn. I'm Will Pedersen. Let me know what questions that you might have. Do we have any pre-submitted questions today, Maria? No, we don't. Uh -uh. OK. Got any interesting questions from support today? Let me just look through. I will be here. Maybe I'll work on my MPS while we wait for some questions. Rob Schweitzer. Hey, how's it going? Good afternoon, handsome. How are you today? Fantastic. How are you? I am doing wonderful. Good. Did you want to make me uh, <laughs> like a panelist? Panelist, yeah. Thanks you for bet. that. Hey, Josh, you have a question for us today? Yes, I do. What you got? I was just typing it. Um, I'll go ahead and say it. So, uh, where do I start? <laughs> so, okay. So, I have a flow right now where I import Excel one by one. I do import each row, I save the entity, all that's working fine. And in a version two, I'm looking to do batch upload of Excel files. Okay. And I started working on the logic and I, I created a second form with a multi-file upload button and I get a list of file data. And then from there, I need to feed that into my import Excel steps. So I kind of got, I'm looking for just to understand how to go from the list of file data and then to bring that into my, into my flow. I wasn't, sh I started playing around with um, uh, split string, split file data, and yeah, I'm kind of, kind of stuck there. Could use your help thinking through that. Yeah, what's the, 
describe to me what you're you're passing in. You're passing like a multi-file upload with individual Excel files. Uh, a list of file data. That's what I'm passing in. A list. Of, okay. Mm -hmm. And what do you need? Each each file data is a an Excel file or some sort of file, right? Correct. Each 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 um, file data is an Excel file that mm -hmm. I need to import. Uh, and in each Excel file, there's six tables, six different worksheets that I have. That that's okay. my flow. Mm -hmm. And I have working what one individual file, and now I'm looking to do a multi do a multi-file upload and then pass that list of file data through my flow. Okay. I think it's, it, I think all you need to do is just loop your uh, your file data array. Let me just create a folder here. Okay. So, okay, I just pulled up my flow. So I have my multi-file upload button, then I created a list builder. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then I started with a for each step and then a list insert. I wasn't sure if that was the... Oh, yeah, you shouldn't need to do all that stuff. Okay. Yeah, like, let me just, like, let me get a form here. On this form, I'll put a multi-file upload. Oops, sorry, back. So search for multi here. Here's a multi file upload and a button. And this thing I'll call, you know, all Excels. It is type will be file data to match yours. I'll save this. I could use file reference. Yeah, sure. But yeah, In fact, I, if these I are big, it might be, it might be worthwhile. Small. Okay. Yeah. What I would then do is something like this. So for each, you can just pass your list right into the for each step. So here's my file data list. And then if you look at the for each step, the item is gonna be one file data. And then like, let's assume uh, like you were using like a for each uh, Excel CSV maybe. Yeah, I have, I can take exactly what I have. One. So I have one, two, I have five tables. The first one is a import CSV Excel step, and the other one is a Excel to object mapping. There is the Excel to object mapping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all working fine. Yeah, well, I, like looking at import Excel or CSV, you could just you could imagine it's something like this. You'd have to do like you'd for each the list. And you'd you'd import Excel CSV, right? And then you'd need to for each that list again. So let me just get this. I'll put, I'm just going to get something set up here. So like it, this is kind of what your design might look like. Uh, let me just ignore these so they go away. Yeah, and so you do something like. Um, I'm just gonna select any kind of data type I see here just to kind of mock it up. But your process could look something like this. I'll walk back through this here in a second. All right, so you'd like get your files from your user. You'd start looping those files. For each file, you do import Excel CSV to get your list of objects back. And then you'd loop that list into like a create step. Now, the one thing this doesn't do, which you'd have to handle, um, and I don't know that this is a good step for dynamic um, worksheet. Do you actually specify the worksheets on this one? You don't, do you? That's unfortunate now that I'm looking at it. Um, you might have to do this pattern. So maybe this should be a subflow, but you might have to do this pattern for every worksheet. So are these, these aren't big Excel files? No, nah, they're like, nah, they're, not they're way within the limit, 15. Are, but is the format of every tab the same? Yeah, yeah, we yeah ah, we got all that done. Okay, yes. so then we're do, creating an Excel with Python, and to pull the data from those calculations, we auto generate five tabs. So in a okay, so decisions can read it, and the mapping is all fixed. Got it. Yep. Yeah, then this is this is here's what I would do. This is something like this. So I create a subflow, right? 
-hmm. And in this subflow, I'm going to create a new subflow, and this will be called each worksheet importer or something, right? That's a good question. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare some input data here. I'm going to declare the current file, which I'll make file data, right? And then I'm going to declare a current worksheet worksheet number, which will be an integer, right? And then I'm going to use a for each. I need I need a step that'll let me dynamically pick the worksheet. So for each Excel lets me use this get worksheet from Flow. Now this step isn't going to handle super large Excels very gracefully. So I'm just going to call that out. But I can pass in my file data input to this, right? So current file. And then this, this is like a, this is kind of like a loop step. It has a, it has loop behavior built into it, unlike the import Excel CSV, which expects you to use a for each. And so I'm just going to use a create data step here as if it's a actual like database write, right? And then imagine here, I'm going to, let's assume I have fields here. I'll just call them, imagine these are the fields to my database type, right? Like the, the, the I'm going to map to to save the data. And the way I access this is, if you're not familiar with this step, is this, this has a thing called um, current row. And current row has fields, which are the columns, and then the value, the data type of the field. So text value or Boolean or date time, whatever the particular value of that field is. So you can come in here. Use this for each Excel CSV, use the create step for your data type, whatever that appropriate create step is, and then map in the, this using this kind of pattern current row, and it'll loop through the file for you. And then, you know, this step being an actual save step or create step will write those files to the database. But then what you can do is in your main flow, you probably are going to do something like this, use a for loop. So for each into a for loop. And this is what your this is what your construction is going to look like. Something similar to this. This comes back here. Oops, that doesn't look great. And then your for loop, you're going to do like five times. You know, loop five times. This gives you the item. Uh, this is you know current. I'll call it current index or something like that. And then current file comes from your for each step, which is item, and your current worksheet number comes from item index. And then for each file, you can loop that file. You can loop five times, right? Because of the number of iterations here. And for each loop, you'll pass the index in. And that would be the index of each worksheet. And then someone uploads 10 files. You loop 10 times. You loop five times for each item into a create step. And then come hit back to the for each and then exit. That should give you, I think, what you're after, something similar to that. Okay. So the number of iterations, five, for example, would be five files in this for that case. I'm so it's it's a little bit hard to hear you, Josh. Can you re can you re-ask that question? So the the five in that example was for the number of files. So in that case, five. Uh, this is uh, this is the number of worksheets. Okay, gotcha. The, like if you don't have if this was just five files you don't need this loop here right but if you have you need to import each worksheet individually correct so um and, but if the format of each worksheet is identical all you have to do is swap out the worksheet index right because we just access in the excel we access the worksheet index number so that means that we can just and that gives us a nice little win here because otherwise, you'd be doing something where you'd probably have multiple, you'd like kind of duplicate these, and you'd have like worksheet one, worksheet two, worksheet three, worksheet four, worksheet five, something like that. That's what I have for the individual file. Okay. Yeah, but, but this this lets you loop the list and loop the worksheets is what you get out of this. So you're, you're pairing up a for each. This is, you know, loop all files, right? And then this is loop through worksheets or something similar to that and then this would be import each worksheet okay so for example in my import since i have two kinds of imports i have one table which is 
by one workbook, which is a import Excel. And then I have three, which are Excel to object mapping. I, I would have two subflows in this case, one subflow for one of the workbooks in an Excel, and then another subflow for the three other workbooks in a given Excel. Is that because the format of those are different? Yeah, so two okay. of my tables are just individual records and mm -hmm. two are, are lists. Okay. Yeah, so for, for the table that's just an, an individual record, I just do a import, Excel, save entity. Okay. And, if, and if you're the workbooks that are lists, I do a Excel to object map and then a batch insert. Okay, sure, that's fine. Okay. I would just bundle that stuff, each of those into a subflow and then loop the file list. You don't need to use list builders here. You, 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 you're getting a list automatically. So you don't need to build a list. You just need to loop, use a for each to loop through that list in some way. But you don't, you, you don't need to use, a list builder would be like if you're building up some string list, like maybe you're gonna build up like a dynamic HTML table to, to, to put into like an email or something, but you don't need list builders for this kind of stuff. Does that give you what you need, Josh? Yep, I'm gonna. I'm starting to play around with it now. So I appreciate okay. That. Yeah, you bet. Happy to help. Hey, go ahead, David. Sorry, I didn't. I didn't see the raise hand thing. Oh, no worries. Um, is there, uh, like when I run a raw SQL step, and I want to output just like a, a number, like a count, right? Um, is there a way to output it to a native type like decimal or int, or do I just have to go through uh, dynamic data rows to get that return? Does that make sense? From a SQL step? Yeah, like a raw SQL step. Like I think you can select a type to output as. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You can create a, um, uh, a type here. Like uh, as long as the types match. So like if I created like a flow structure here and I'll call this, you know, SQL return. Oftentimes you already like have either way. So I'll call it uh, str1 and I'll call it int one uh, and make that an integer. Sorry, two seconds here.
do, 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 SQL return. So then let me write a SQL query. So come in to database integration and I'll actually, you want to do a raw SQL step, right? So yeah, like if I'm okay. querying like an external database or something, I just want to get a, a count of something, right? Oh, and oh I, ju I just want to out uh, I just want to output yeah, the yeah. count, right? Like not necessarily to a to a type, right? Like um, oh, then you should be able to select integer, I think. Let's just confirm that. So let me write a quick SQL query here. So I'll select. Let me select count star oops, star from entity account. And on raw SQL, I can return, select return data. Output type, I can select int, I think. And then let's see if I debug this and I look at my output data, I should get result zero. That's unfortunate. Um, so integer won't work. See, that should have worked. But yeah, if I see that's what, dynamic that's what data row. Row. Yeah. If I use data rows, will I see the right number come back? Okay, there's the actual count. Okay, so I bet it's column one. This is probably stupid, but let's try this. Let's create a flow structure. In fact, I'll edit the flow structure I just created here. And I'll name and I'll delete this row. I'm going to name this thing at column one. Um, what does that show as in SQL when I run that? What's the column name? It's like, it's like count. T count. It comes out as no column name. So let me, as call one, if I run that, it comes out as call one. So I'm going to name this thing call one. It's an integer. That's fine. I come back into my flow here, edit my raw SQL, and I'm going to add an alias here uh, as call one. And I'll change this back to select type. And the output type here will be my. SQL return. And oh, it doesn't like that. What's wrong? Error running. Oh, well, I messed up my query there. That's what's wrong. What's wrong with that? Why is it slamming from an entity account together? Okay, well, I don't know what that was. So return data, select type, select my type, run. If I look at my output, I get eight. And then if I look at data explorer, I get results first integer, which is column one. So all you have to do is make sure that you use a, create a type and make sure that the type and make sure the property name of the type matches whatever the column name is for the return. And that, that's what I did here. Added a column alias to the count. So it shows up as column one mm -hmm. and then name my property column one mm -hmm. in my okay. simple data type here. And then that so will it let does, it do the oh, binding okay. for you. So it doesn't know if I just put it to type and put it as a native type, like straight to int, like it doesn't know. It should. I mean, it really should, but um, it doesn't appear to do that today. Okay, I gotcha. But it, admittedly, if it's single integer coming back, you should just be able to select int and it would work. Oh, okay, okay. Um, if I just create like a flow structure or something for that, just to be used inside of flow for that should be fine as long as the column names match up on the return. Okay. Yeah, exactly right. And then you don't have to, you know, the, the, the downside is now you have a this flow structure you carry around. The upside is you don't have to muck around with dynamic data rows. 
So, mm. you know, there's an extra object in your project, but it's easier to use in a flow or it's a little, it's less easy to use in a flow, but there's not an extra object in your project. That's the trade-off there. I gotcha. Okay. Cool. Appreciate Anything it. else today? Yeah, you bet, man. Anything else? Uh, no. Let me see what I was working on this morning if I have any questions about it. Uh, no, I think that's probably it. Yeah. Okay. Give me just a sec, everyone. Let me know if you guys have any other questions. Okay, sorry about that, everyone. Uh, anybody have any other questions for us today? Okay, if that's it for today then, we'll go ahead and call it a day. Thanks for uh, all the questions. Um, and who is here for the rest of the week, Maria? Um, we have Brandon Roberts tomorrow and Ashley Beer on Thursday. Alrighty. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your week.